I'll show you how to tune an NDB. In the previous video I showed you how to tune up a VOR, which is fairly straightforward. A little bit different when selecting an NDB frequency. Now on the Garmin 1000, it's down here on this soft key function here for ADF and DME. So bringing that up, bring up this menu here. So you've got a frequency box, active and standby frequencies for the ADF. And you select the one you want, pressing enter to switch between them. To select an NDB, get the frequency off your map or your plate and you enter it into here. So the Tauranga frequency is 346. So using the FMS knobs here, so the right three, do this slowly until you get confidence. Four, six, very easy to make a mistake. Rule of thumb with the Garmin, if it's correct, press enter. Three, four, six, select. To identify an NDB, you've got to use the audio tone. Over here, you've got ADF. Listen to the Morse code and compare it with what you've got on your plate or your map. That sounds good. Identify is done. Now, an ADF needle you can only display on one of the bearing needles. The CDI won't uh, receive any information from an ADF. So go into PFD, cycle through bearing 2. There it is. As you can see, the NDB is straight ahead. So that's all good. We've selected, identified, displayed the NDB at Tauranga. But I've no idea how far away the, that the beacon actually is, as you'll see here. And I've still got a VOR tuned on the CDI. So I'll just continue the video to explain uh, the correct configuration on the G1000 for NDB DME navigation. Okay, so NDB has been selected, identified, displayed. What I want to do next is get rid of uh, the VOR up here. So I can just, on nav 1, I can select a dead frequency like that. And that is known as detuning nav 1. And back down here, it's gone. But I can still use it to tune up uh, or select desired tracks that I want to maintain. But we still don't have distance information, so I'll talk through how to select, identify, display your DME. On the same menu here, you've got DME on the box here, just below ADF. Now that will be slaved to either NAV1 or NAV2, which of course are up here. The standard configuration, I'll use NAV2 and confirm that's NAV2, but also check what the frequency actually is. That's Rotorua, so we don't want that. We want the Tauranga DME frequency, which is 113 decimal 2. So select no visual ident for a DME. So it's just select up here, confirming that NAV2 is active down here. After selecting the DME frequency, you need to identify it with the audio panel soft key. And usually this takes around 30 seconds to cycle through. So if you're in flight, try and, there it is, I was going to say, make use of that spare time and do something useful. That tone was TG, so that's a positive ident for the DME. Turn it off, and then display. So to display DME, PFD, and the same soft key brings up the DME. There we go, DME nav 2, 113 decimal 2, everything's confirmed, and we've got 4 DME. For the NDB, selected, identified, displayed. DME, also selected, identified, displayed.